right, there we go. Hey everyone, Richard Carlton here. Welcome to another great day of FileMaker training at fmtraining.tv. I'm the creator of fmtraining.tv where you can learn all about the FileMaker platform and learn how to build better FileMaker applications for you, your customers, your organization. This broadcast is completely free to everyone and is being broadcast in high definition to Discord, YouTube, and to Twitch. This broadcast is being recorded, which is really great. Of course, we might clean up the recording a little bit. So if we make a malfunction during the live stream, then of course we reserve the right to clean that up on the recording later on. However, because it's a live broadcast, we encourage you to ask questions. In fact, some people get aggravated when there's this dialogue with you and we ask questions. I, I, we want questions. If you have a question, odds are other people have the question too. And so I want to thank everyone for logging in, Ken and TK and Dave, Dave One, Dave Learning, uh, Ed, uh, Elzo, uh, Carol, Jake, Mike, all of you, welcome once again to another great broadcast. Now, as a reminder, if you want to check out the upcoming broadcast, go to fmtraining.tv, press the left tab for the live button. You can see the upcoming broadcast schedule. That's pretty awesome. Additionally, if you want to help support this channel, right? We always say this, uh, this broadcast is brought to you by fmtraining.tv, bringing you the greatest and the most entertaining FileMaker training videos available. So the idea is that if you want to help support the channel, make sure you check out our on-demand video bundles. We have videos that cover the latest version of FileMaker. We have videos that cover the deploy course. In fact, we used to sell the courses individually anymore. It's just much simpler to sell a complete bundle for a low price. We do this on an annual basis. So if you buy one of the bundles, that really helps support the channel. It ensures that we can keep coming back every day because this broadcast actually takes a lot of money to run. The people here don't work for free. Now we're doing the OAuth, right? So we're picking up the OAuth conversation. So once again, the whole benefit to the OAuth is the fact that you don't have to manage a bunch of people's individual credentials in each FileMaker FMP12 file. This was yesterday's setup. We spent all yesterday getting it set up on Azure. Jacob Taylor is now gonna show his screen, although I don't know what file we're gonna do yet, Jacob. I guess we can walk through that, I guess, at some point. Mm -hmm. So basically covering what we did yesterday, uh, so we went over kind of why you might want to use OAuth, uh, what kind of size of organization or bigger it, it starts to make sense at, um, which is like once you get over 10 or so, um, and if you have a bunch of files or a bunch of servers or both, um, the, the admin dealing with adding and removing users when you onboard or offboard employees uh, can be kind of a pain. And so... Um, you might switch to something like OAuth. Um, so we covered all of that, kind of the why and, and how. Um, and then most of the time is spent with account signup. It's getting onto Azure, getting your account set up, um, getting the, the different user account validations done, um, and then plugging everything together. So we have a couple of users. We have a group um, that those users are members of. Uh, there was another modification that we made yesterday to the what's called the application manifest. Um, and then... Finally, we have basically all of our little IDs that we have to plug into FileMaker Server today. Um, and then the, the, the second thing that we're going to cover today is the actual kind of a, a quick version, but a database integration. So plugging this OAuth login system into a live FileMaker database on a FileMaker Server, uh, and then hopefully successfully testing a login afterwards. <laughs> so... Okay, so now I know the credentials for the file that was shoved up on that. Okay, so yeah, we have a file we can use now. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, the file we're going to do is a copy of starting point seven. Okay, um, so that will be the file you see it in there. It's fm underscore starting point seven usc. If you see that, perfect. All right. Um, okay, so where are we in the conversation? We are to the point where did we create groups and people yet? Do we want to invite a couple people to do this? Uh, yeah, if have their emails. Correct. Why don't we do to, that? Why we don't we do, do that. that real quick? We need a couple victims. So Kyle's back. We're gonna like submit him. Um, let's submit Scott. Who wants to be a, a, a try this out in real time on your side? We'll invite you. Okay. Go on, uh, Scott Kane. So, Scott, what email? Do, I mean, off the top of my head, I don't know what Scott's email is. Um, I don't know if you know what it is, Jacob. I can, look, I can look it up if he, if he. If you want to pay, give us your email. Cool. 
Yeah, okay, Let's Scott Kane. So go ahead and uh, go through that. Uh, we're not seeing it on your screen, though, so let's... Yep. Hmm? No, it's on my screen. Oh, is it? Not his email. It's in Discord, but... Okay. Do... Yeah, 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 you want to go through the process. And we're going to invite a user. Perfect. Awesome. Yep. We're inviting a user. We're going to name him Scott Kane, because that's his name. We're putting his email in. Oops. Put his name in twice. I actually don't know what the second set of boxes is for. <laughs> okay. um, we uh, don't need a, oh, yeah. well, a role. We, we need a, do need a group. group. But yeah. we're, we're going to be on our sales sale. team. Okay. Yeah, we have one group. So, Scott, you're now on our sales team. Welcome. <laughs> Let's invite uh, Kyle. Cannot play. Anyone else who wants to play today? Oh, man, it's back there. Okay, so now we've got people in here. This is awesome. And there was one more. So uh, this particular server is going to be a Mac, um, but the process is exactly the same no matter where you are. Doesn't matter at all. Windows um, or Linux or whatever. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna come to your admin console just like we have. Ah, here's your database. Fantastic. Um, we're gonna go over here. I believe to the administration tab. Yep. Yeah. And then the external, external authentication. authentication. And yep. then this is where Richard gets excitable with his PDF of our translations. Can, between can you make this a little bigger? Can you make this as a, it's encoding? Can you make your screen 720, Jacob, by any chance? Or is it going to My be screen is 720 currently, yes. Is it? Um, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. It's fuzzy because two is giving me fuzzy video. Okay. Cool. Um, All right. All right. Little, that's fine. So. Um, there we go. Oh, yeah, way, way better. Okay, so administration. Yeah. Then you press this button over here, and you're going to get this spread of stuff over here, right? Yep. Then we're going to click, what, the Microsoft one, right? Yep, we're going to plug the Microsoft stuff in first. Uh, and we cleared this out previously. Uh, I'll say a, a humorous user experience challenge here is uh, if you ever put anything into the boxes and hit save, you can't ever actually clear them, which is funny. Kind of weird. And the uh, other thing is, is that there's no label here because – uh, they channeled Steve Jobs from the grave, and they figured that if you have a bunch of crap in here, that you should recognize what the hell it is. And I was like, oh, my God, right? It's like having yeah. Nick Hunter design the UI. It's like, hey, so uh, really it's, it's a UI fail in an epic sort of way. It's because no one, yeah, they're not just using it, so. And maybe we'll send the video to Claris. They can deal with that. All right. And then so we had three things that we took down yesterday. Um, those IDs, if you will, those they're like UUIDs in FileMaker. Um, one is the tenant ID, which I'll do first because uh, it's the first one that you encounter on the admin. Come over here. We go to our default directory. It's going to be this thing right here, the tenant ID, right? And bring in, oops tab correctly actually um, so we're going to paste this that's going to be our tenant id uh, the azure key uh, which i can only copy and paste here actually um, again this was we yesterday we made an application within our azure ad uh -huh. uh, and then created a client secret basically right. And there's an ID that's associated with that, and most people confuse that. That's not what we're using. The actual client secret, which is only shown to you, like hit create or whatever, and it shows it to you right then. If you don't write it down, then you have to throw that away and get a new one. Um, because so we want never the one that was, you again. We want the one that was called value, right? The value one it was called. Yeah, value. correct. Yeah. Yep. In fact, know. Jacob, if you could paste that in and then do the last one, show us where you get that, and then I want to pause and go to the PDF. And go to the truck because since I'm not really presenting, you're presenting, right? So yeah, okay. all right. Put the wrong one in there. So, so let's, so let's this, go. This walk through this again. Where does that one come from? Where does that one do that? So that again? is the application ID. So I'm going to go back over here. This is our right. We're on the home screen. It's like the overview of AD of Active Directory. Over here on the left side, we have app registrations. This was the app that we, as we're calling it, the app that we created yesterday. An demo. application, as a reminder, is a single FileMaker server. Yep. Uh, the app, uh, this thing, this app, uh, is where you put the address that Azure is going to send the details for when somebody actually successfully logs in, which is why it's associated with a single FileMaker server. Because if you had multiple FileMaker servers, for example, uh, you would have a different app for each one so that they could each have their own kind of post back address uh, where Azure sends some 
I don't know, I actually don't, I'm not 100% clear on what they send over, but tokens or keys associated with the login that says, yes, Jacob signed in successfully or whatever. Um, it tells the FileMaker server that. And then FileMaker server goes, yay, and lets you in. Um, and so this app ID right here is what goes right here. This is that app ID. Okay. So I paste that. Um, this is the client secret. The only place that we can find this right now is because I have it in a text document. Um, you cannot view that at all, um, but you can see it in the list. If you, let's see, if I click into the app, I go to it's, it's, certificates uh, and secrets. Yeah, and then yeah. there's this thing. And so there's okay. a secret ID. This is not what you need. This is what you need, and it's all fuzzed out and it's gone, so yeah. And uh, Stu, yes, that's correct. He said, so the apps in, in Azure AD, an app, aligns with a server, not with an individual FileMaker application or database. That's or correct. solution yeah. or file. It's the server. It's, it's yeah. the terminology is a killer. Can you, Jacob, think, go and finish these three up, and then let's go to that PDF if you have that PDF yep. lying around. And then, so I'll go, we'll go back over. And the and final Margaret, one, if you can help back in. Um, and then this last one is called the directory ID. Um, Azure calls this the tenant ID. If you go to your, on here I have, you see where my mouse is up in the top left, yep. the default directory. Nope, I have to click default directory twice. Sorry to get to the overview. That's this thing, the, Azure calls it the tenant ID. Um, it's like your, your directory ID, your tenant ID. Those are all the same name. Um, situations where you could have more of those, they don't matter here, so. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to save it. Yep. And save. there's and another thing that we have to do here. Yeah, which is basically turn it on. Turn it on. Yep. So we turn it on, and we only, the only one of these that we put details into is the Microsoft one. So that's the only one we can turn on. And this Microsoft, this is not, to my knowledge, this is not the Active Directory. This is Azure Active Directory. This is not the on prem Active Directory, right? Mm -hmm. I think. I'm yes. pretty sure. Yeah. So this is really, in my opinion, grossly mislabeled. Um, it should be Microsoft Azure, not just Microsoft, because Microsoft, this thing can, this thing can get Active Directory from an on-prem, the old school one that you have in the building, or the Azure, which is the new cloud service, relatively new, right? And so this right here, once again, is kind of mislabeled. So if you want to go to the PDF real quick, we're going to go through this. Margaret's going to post the link to the PDF again today. Yeah. Um, hopefully she is there. I am. I will but do that. Finding the PDF and cross post it in all three locations. Jacob, if you want to show us the PDF. The the final thing here, uh, again, the, there uh, there's a, there's always a th oh perfect. So there's always a third step, uh, right? So we put our keys in, we turned it on, we turned it on. You got to restart oh. FMS. Yeah. And then we can do the the exciting. I re part. would restart the box, but yeah. So did you yes. did you restart the service? Did you do it over here? Is that what you did? I did not. Do, that's the previous one, actually. Is the is that? Oh no, you told me we can use the option key. That's right. No, no, we're going to use the option key. Okay. Um, yeah, we're fine. So just to close all and do a restart on the server. Yep. While it's restarting, we will cover the PDF instructions, which are kind of the hacked instructions that we, for those of you who remember the conversation from yesterday, uh, Claris has four different sources of mm, truth, shall we say, uh, kind of a source of truth on how to do this. And neither single doc, none of the, those four documents by themselves is a single coherent set of instructions that is complete, is the problem, okay? So, um, so the idea is that we took a PDF that Claris has for the Claris Cloud and we've been hacking it. And that's that download link that you're seeing there. And this is what it looks like right here. So I kind of went through, started scribbling additional information into it. And if you come down, there's a, right there with the, the four links, just so you know, this is our source of information. We combined all these things to create this single PDF here. All right, so come down, or to fix the PDF. The PDF was created by Claris, but it's not complete. And then, uh, if we scroll down a little more, we get to terminology. I added this section in here. And so let's talk about this real quick. I'm going to jump down uh, to the idea. Actually, it's not even in here, really. It's an idea of what an app is, right? So, um, you know, a, a uh, let's see. So director ID, AK10 ID, Azure ID. So this is that one of the ones that we needed right here. Then this is the application idea, ID, or not idea. And this is the integration with a specific FileMaker server, 
right? So you can have more than one FileMaker server, not super uh, common, but like RCC has many, many servers. But if you're a, like Kyle Williams with his, uh, he's an in-house developer, he probably has a single FileMaker server. I doubt he would have three or four or five of them, right? And then you have the secret key that you set up, but you're looking for the value item, which you only see once you need to save that somewhere, right? And then uh, we covered this yesterday, and then we have a group that we set up on the uh, on the uh, Azure site, right? So there's an Azure uh, a group which will match essentially a FileMaker group, right? So that's kind of where we're at at this point if the server is restarted. Yeah, so once we get back up, uh, we're going to log in with an admin credential to this file uh, and then plug the group in. Basically. Yeah, we have to plug the groups and stuff and turn this on. So you're gonna so you turn it on on the server first, then you go to the individual specific files and activate them on the server if that makes sense, right? Now we set our servers to not auto start the files, which is a great thing to keep your files from becoming corrupted. So whenever we restart the server, we have to go into databases okay. and uh, click the open all button, right? It'll spin up and they'll start being hosted. You don't want this to auto start. Very bad idea. Okay, you'll end up with a crashed file, or you'll you'll not know that you have a crashed file, and uh, you keep using it. And that's bad. Risk. All right, so now let's uh, go ahead and we can close this probably and uh, log into the file. Da -da. Is it this one? Uh, I'm going to slack you the password right here because it's beyond okay. amazingly secure. So it's admin. And uh, it's the CRM there. It's that fourth one. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice, nice. That's that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and admin and that password. The most and... secure password I've seen. All right. And then you said option. Sorry, it popped up with my... Well, it shouldn't do it yet because it's not enabled, right? It just yes. go ahead so you don't have... No, it does that. I'll, then I'll bring it back over so you can see. This okay. is what it does. If you turn it on on the server, that's what it does. If, if you, you turn it on the server and you haven't turned it on the file yet, it, it does this anyway? Yes. Wow. Okay. So, yep. uh, so the problem is, is that there's no option there to log in. So what you do is you hold the option key down, or probably shift key on Windows, and you're going to get the following dialog once again. You'll recognize this. You get your credential we'll option, right? That. There yep. we go. So admin, we're going to log in normally here it's and sign say in. sign in. There I am. Show up on the server. So the Microsoft part wasn't, it's not going to work yet because we have to finish turning it on. Even though it was showing it there, it wasn't going to work yet. So now we need to go to what? File, manage security. If you can uh, pop yep. that dialog for us here. So file, manage security, for those of you who probably didn't see that. There we go. There. That's okay. about it. So, um, so we have one user, and that's the one that I just logged in with. Um, okay. We're going to drop this down. Ooh. Hey, there's our new. That's new as of That's a new three, one, right? three hours ago, yeah. Uh, you guys will hear about that uh, Monday in 10 days? Yeah, in about two weeks, we're going we're to do a, a 19.4 conversation. So, okay, so we're going to say Microsoft is your ID. This is the way it should be labeled, by the way, in the server. Remember I said it was missing that? Here it's labeled correctly, right? So, Yeah. Um, and so you're, you'll select that, and, and this is the thing that tells you you've enabled the features and stuff correctly, at least on FileMaker Server. It will not, it'll, it'll, I don't know what the other text is, but it doesn't say supported by current host. It'll say unsupported or something else to tell you that, hey, like you haven't turned it on on FileMaker Server, or for example, you enable it, but like forget to restart FMS, um, and it's not on, on, or, you know, like the feature's ticked, but it's not spun up fully. Um, so, because we're only going to add a group here, um, just for simplicity's sake, we only actually have to do one thing, which is we're going to add the group. So I'm going to click new, uh, and this let's, is the main difference here. Fun. Yeah, let's do two for fun. Let's do a sales and marketing. Yeah, sales okay. and marketing. So we add a group. So first one, step Here's one, our, step I'm gonna, two. Yep, I'm going to flip to my web browser here because I'm going to grab. You see that says group uh, group name, which is object ID. So I'm going to go flip to, not that window, that window. So we're here. We're going to go down. We're going to find uh, our. We're groups at. There, our, group, our, groups. Oh, there it is. Yep. Covered it in green. Sorry. You covered it. <laughs> so, yeah, and, then, and then this is our object ID. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to. Yes, there it is. Sorry. I wanted to copy to clipboard. 
execute button here. Um, so we're just going to take that object ID and plug it into the file. Um, so we flip back, we clean that out, and we could probably put a name here, like uh, say, uh, oh yeah, give them data entry. Yeah, there we go. Yep. Say, so we uh, RCC sales. Right. Okay. Perfect. And that's it. And so we hit OK. And those and that's two committed. Oh, uh, okay. Did yes. it? Did it close the window? Can we do the other one just for fun? Can we create another yeah. one, actually? I, I know, but w if we're going to make a second group, we have to make the second group. It's not made uh, on Amazon yeah. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. So we go to groups. Uh, we have our CC sales. So we're going to make a new group. Uh, and yep, same as before. We're not doing Microsoft 365. It's a security group. That's the the change that we made to our manifest yesterday as to what kind is allowed. So who does it? You said marketing. So we're going to marketing. Yeah. Group. So we're going to say create, and then I, all right, so we have the group. I need to invite the user. Dun, dun, dun. So we're going to say new user. We're going to invite the user. We're going to put him in. You want to be or Dean, Oregon. sir, or you can be Oregon Dean. You want to be Oregon Dean? Yeah, that's Oregon Dean. And then Oregon Dean. Oregon. All right, we're going to be Oregon yeah. and Dean. Dean Perfect. And then he's going to be in, let's see, he's not in that group. He's going to be in the marketing department. So, all right, there we yeah. go. So beautiful, we have him. Uh, I'm going to go to our homepage, to our groups. And then the second thing that we need, so marketing is our second group. Yeah, I see that. Copy to clipboard. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go over back to FileMaker. And here we're doing file manage security. See. File manage security, BAMO. And it's going to always show us on this screen when we join. So we're going to drop down to do Azure AD. We got this. So we're going to say new. And we'll, uh, this is a group also. And then what kind of powers are we giving Oregon or people who might? No, he's, he's, uh, data, uh, he's read only. Yeah. We, he's read only. He's read only. Make him read okay, only. Cool. He's, he's marketing. We don't want Yeah, we don't want them making changes. This is not Perfect. good. So, so understand this is a stop, stop, hopeful. Sorry. This is an important point. At this point, say we only had two groups within RCC, we are done managing this forever here. Anything that you want to change, you would change at the privilege set level because you're going to adjust. You know, you have you probably have a custom privilege. You duplicate the data entry, you customize it, you call it marketing or sales or whatever. So you, all you're going to do is manage that. You're not managing the people anymore. You're done with that. If you want to manage the people, add them, edit them, remove them, change their password. We do it from the Azure website site. That is the benefit of this. Okay. So much easier to manage it from here. Plus, two-factor authentication. I'm sure you folks are getting saying, "Hey, would you like to set up two-factor authentication?" So now uh, they should. It should work. They should be able to log in, right? Don't you think? Uh, once I hit OK, yeah. Okay, so you guys should be able to log in if you've gone through the process of setting your stuff up. Uh, you want to go through one just to close it out and see if we can get it to go through. Let's flip it to Safari. Let's see if that'll work live. I have no idea. We're going to find out together. Because I have this, which is from yesterday, um, that theoretically I'm logged in as Richard. So um, okay, that works. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to see if we'll see if that whole thing changes live or not. Yeah, Stu, uh, users and I'm going to answer uh, Stu's question. Is there a difference between user and oh, user and guest? I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sure there is, Stu. Does it matter to us? I'm not sure. Okay, so so he so so what happened here is that he clicked it and it and FileMaker Server bounced him to the Microsoft website. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he's going to single he's going to sign on once here, and once he does this going forward, he won't have to do it anymore, unless yep. he changes location or does something security that's kind of weird, and the security sees that Microsoft as a problem. All right, so next. Yep, sorry, getting your uh, lovely, ugly password here. Okay. So I'm gonna put our password. Uh, Canberra, you're gonna use Pro. It's gonna bounce you to the browser. It will launch your browser automatically. Um, and that is why I said I'm playing around with this right here. Yep, yeah, if you, you can refuse the MS Authenticator there's a no button, but it, it's no for 14 days. Okay. So what the FM Authenticator, for those of you wondering about this, is a two-factor authentication app that runs on your mobile device that allows you to easily do two-factor. It says, hey, are you on your phone? It's just you. You're on your phone. Are you 
doing this, right? You can skip it for 14 days. If uh, basically you're skipping the two-factor authentication for 14 days, more or less, right? Yeah. Uh, but it'll it'll assume you into it at that point. Um, I will. There's there's another thing I will say. Microsoft of the authenticator apps, Microsoft's is frankly the best. Um, it's it's both cloud backed, reasonably secure, and can do a functionally infinite number of accounts at the same time. Unfortunately, I think Microsoft is the only one that uses it, so that's like really nice, and nobody cares. Um, but it works well. It's not. I'm not running into any issues with it. Okay. So this is like legit. Two-factor authentication. It's not the Taylor Sharp hack and all that kind of stuff that got me into trouble like three, four years ago. So uh, then you say, "Hey, are you going to grant grant permissions for Microsoft to fire up your uh, stuff?" Right? And there is that is our server name. So this would say FileMaker Server uh, at um, you know Canberra would be Sandia Labs or whatever or something top secret mm -hmm. nuclear weapon security stuff, right? So yeah. Yep. Accept. And then, then you want to ask me, and I'm going to say allow. So this is the first time it's doing this, and so it does it. So. Ooh, your access privileges do not allow you to perform this action. Oh, okay. Uh, let me. Let's. Let me see if I can get in there and figure out what's going on with the. Let's see. Are we not allowed to? No, data entry only should be sufficient. Which group are you part of? Which group? Uh, this was I signed in as you, Rick. So should be the sales group. Let me confirm actually that you're in the sales group because that would be me. Extended privilege. Flawlessly or... operating my demo. If you were not in the group that I'm trying to log in as. <laughs> um, yep, five users. Okay, how do I get the member list? Oh, members over on the left side. Yep, you're in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so which group is that? It's the uh, data entry. Uh, only or the data entry, data entry only? only? Yes, it's uh, uh, sales. Yep. Uh, oh, FM app is not enabled for that privilege set. Oh, uh, stand oh. by, stand by, stand by. Uh, FileMaker Beautiful. Pro access was not enabled. That's a test question, everyone. FM app, FM app. We're, by the way, as a reminder, we're having very serious, intensive certification study the second week of January. It's just put it on the calendar now. Save the date, January tenth, eleventh, twelfth. 13th and 14th, five days. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay one more time. I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna hit okay, I'm gonna hit okay. It's the change should have uh, saved, so try it again. All right, so we'll pop it. Oh man, why does it? Oh yeah, it asks me every time. Just in case I'm signed into seven email addresses. Not, they would like to think I am. Uh, no, I still don't want two factor, thank you. Uh, uh, ooh, well, I would like to stay, stay signed in. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah stay signed in. Yes, that way please. They badger you next time, right? That Make will sure. not badger me. And yeah. guess what we got going? There it goes. It logged in. So there we go. Beautiful. So now, and of course, it's a little bit on the pokey side, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. Because you're hammering it out of uh, it my home and office. And then there it goes. My yep. home office, yes. And so here we are. And yeah. and so now we're Ruben's at in. Ruben's in. Oh. Ruben's in. So why, why don't you look at our FileMaker server and see what it says and look at Azure and see what it says. What kind of telemetry right. do we have so, for everyone? FileMaker server first is over here. Oh, I see. No. Yeah. Uh, Scott's in. Uh, Oregon Dean's in. And I'm assuming that uh, Ruben is Nova E. Take a look at the... Um, um, and then you wanted to see the this thing. Yes. Can we see who's logged in recently or how that works? Or No. So what I can show you is there are, I think it's audit logs. Audit logs? What's Ooh, what are access reviews? I didn't look at this before. Uh, Hold on. We're giving it a moment. This okay. tenant does not have... Ah, okay, cool. So we don't have... This is where Microsoft makes you pay money to see smart people stuff. Um, okay. We don't have a valid license at that level, so it says no. Okay, so let's do audit logs and see. Because I think these work. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. So we I have show... ad member. So those are okay. So those are specifically associated with the group. Right? Yeah, so well, so... it's our it's our work with the group. It's our interactions with the group, right? So let's zoom out. Where is? Down here at that sign in. Ah, log. sign in logs. Monitor here. You're monitoring sign in logs. All right. So, hey, look at that. 
There Morgan Dean logged on. Ruben there. logged on. This yep. is great. Yep. yep. There's your. There's all your stuff. Proximate geolocations. Who logged in and when? Uh, ooh, whether they were successful or not. Nice. Looks like everybody took a couple efforts. Interesting. Or so maybe it's a. It may be a two factor, and then it succeeded. That and then may it, be what that is. it might be a bogus fail. It fails, a, but it still lets you through. It looks All like right. it's allowing them three seconds later. So, so now yeah. it's question and answer time because we're kind of we've kind of demonstrated it. We are going to take this video and clean it up quite a bit. Um, it's going to go through a, a substantial clean process. But um, okay, so so Stu asked this question again. I'm going to let him do this. He wants to know from Taylor what is the difference in Azure between a user and a guest. So if you go to if you invite someone over here and you go through the invite process, they come up as users or guests or whatever we have. Guest, guest, guest. Oh, member. I guess member and guest. Is that what you meant, Stu? Yes, member. Yeah, that's what he wants to know. I don't know the answer to this because I'm not a Microsoft Active Directory uh, guru. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it works either way. So works it's not, both ways. Yeah, we not. we tested this over last last week to make sure because I, I don't have an answer for the question but it works both ways basically we were we were concerned that like for example if you had if you set it up and so you, you could probably put this limitation in somehow where only people from your domain can sign up or something like that right yeah uh, only RC consulting users have a Canberra user got in. domain perfect Canberra got in and then David right. Angel who's this is why we have this great group of people here can contribute uh, it says guest normally is a restricted user User in a guest group. Okay. So I guess maybe, yeah. Maybe that means that they have excruciatingly limited permit uh, of limited in, in all senses of that phrase permissions inside of Azure. Not relevant here because they only need to do the one thing, which is log in. But yeah, Scott's definitely in too. So we saw that if we went back to the if we hit default directory yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we go down to the oops, oops. Oh, well, there's there Scott. You go. Nice. Yeah, see so yeah, how that works. Everybody's right? logged in. Cool. All right. And then yeah. Go, uh, go back to the yeah. scroll down to say monitor. It was monitor. Oh, actually, you could monitor right here. Look at this. See if that works the same way. Click that. Uh, ooh, what is this? Ooh, ooh it's a chart. chart. A chart of sign-ins or something. Forty-six sign-ins in the last three yesterday, and forty-three today. That's cool. Uh, other people are hitting the. Because uh, well. it's no, no. It's because it's this thing that we were looking at so each sign in is at least two two uh, hits or three hits or something ones. here's the sign in yeah so like for example uh here's scott interrupted and then logged in but they're four seconds apart but and so if that counts as two yeah that's probably how many records are on the screen and the reason and, it says interrupted is because it's checking your two factor and it, and then and, and it fails and it says oh but you have a 14 day window so you kind of get past it after 14 days, you won't be able to get past it. You're going to have to have your phone for the two-factor. Or maybe, can you use email for two-factor as well as the phone or different than the phone, you think? Mm, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. We're not Microsoft ADP. They're people. trying to get, yeah, they're trying to get everybody into the app. Um, they're, they, they're, at least traditionally, there are always alternatives. Um, Microsoft is trying to get everybody into the app because that one actually works and is easy and uh, dare I say a delightful experience like if you have to do two factor it is the least bad of them um, it's not the most secure I think you have to have the phys those physical tokens the fobs uh, the key fobs those are like the most secure version but yeah the, the app is it's, it's pretty good it's like an 85 yeah. percent as secure and it's 10 times easier because you don't have to you know if you have your phone you're good you're good to go that's it um, you oh. don't have to carry the little fob around or anything yeah, factory key fob would be good yeah so real quick yeah. so let's talk about this let's talk about this because organdy's talking about yeah I want to use Facebook and all this sort of stuff so uh, so here's the deal uh, so I don't know yeah no, he's talking about it with the the new G Wiz uh -huh. stuff. And, and Facebook auth is OAuth, so right. So, but hold up a second. Let's explain why we're using why. Listen, I am not a Microsoft fan. I am an Amazon fan. So why are we not using Amazon? It's, no one's asked me that question, right? I guess I'm not important, but there's reasons why I do what I do, right? And the reason why we're not playing with Amazon. Why is that? Because in Microsoft. Can you, you do me the kind favor of going back to default and showing me and then I'm scrolling trying. down to – and then hold, hold. In all the other OWASPs with the, with the default ones prior to 19.4, I'm saying prior to 19.4, you could sign on with a user. 
for us to do, can we just do a user real quick? Let's just do a user real quick. Let's add someone as a user, okay? So let's say that we want to add, I need another victim. Who wants to sign up real quick for me, please? I need a volunteer step forward we'll that somebody. hasn't signed in already. Right. This is where the world's going. So, so let's do this. So we're going to set up Oregon Dean. There's his new email. Oh, yeah, we have, we have a different name, Dean. Yeah. yeah or Dr. Dean. Dean. Yeah. Oh, you want right. to be, do be doctor? I think it's called Dr. Dean. There Are you go. doctor? I don't know if you can use a – it might be. Okay, let's try that. Scroll down. Enough. Now, no no groups. No, that, no groups. That, that, yeah. Just now, now we need – okay, so – so we're going to invite you now. How now? You're not part of a group. So how do you get into FileMaker? Right. Think about all these people. We don't care about them individually. We funnel them down to a group. There were two groups, and we loaded those groups into FileMaker. So if we do an individual, which I suspect is how Facebook works, if you do an individual, how do you get that individual into FileMaker? Right. Well, you have to do it the old school way. So if you would, if you kindly do that for me, Jacob. There, yeah. So we're gonna do it this way. Uh, oh, I can't do that. You have to do it. You are the uh, one. Okay. Admin. Why don't you quit sharing your screen real quick, and I'll do mine real quick. Yep. So uh, I could zoom in a little bit, but if I go file, manage, security. All right, so we have this is, by the way, this is best practices. We covered this yesterday. You need to have this. It's actually on the certification test. If you don't, if I turn this off right now and I close the window um, and say we over here on the other side, over here, say we had like a different group as administrative, then the only way to get in the file is with through Microsoft Active Directory. And if it goes offline, today or tomorrow or your account gets deleted or something happens, you can never, ever, ever get back in the FileMaker file. It's kind of a very serious problem. So you always want to leave, I don't want to say a back door open, but this is kind of the one back door. You want to do that. We covered this yesterday. Very, very important. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to Microsoft Azure ID. We have these two groups here, right? This is really great. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in over here. So these are two groups. How do we add Oregon Dean? We're like, ah. Oh. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit new and I'm gonna come over here, he's a user. And to put him in, I need his email and I have to write this down. So you have to go through all this painful agony. And if you're doing this, you might as well have just put him in like legitimately. The only benefit out of the system is that you're gonna uh, offload the two-factor authentication and other stuff to someone else, right? And so here I am, I've added him. I can set his group here to uh, shoot, give him full access, why not? All right, and so so you do this, and you're, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, and I say, okay. And now it's going to want to authenticate, and it's authenticating because I've added him as an administrator. So I'm going to put my administrative code in, which is super amazingly secret. I verify. And so the problem is, is that now you've added, a, uh, you've, you have to manage him on Facebook and you have to also spend all the effort which we're trying to get away from of managing him in FileMaker. Why on God's earth would I want to go through and add everyone in here? That was the whole point was not adding him in here, right? So, um, so yeah, this sucks. This sucks. This totally sucks. So the other services, Amazon and Google don't have functional groups as of when we investigated this about two weeks ago, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if with this OAuth 19.4, does Facebook have groups? Probably not. Uh, do these other services that are that you can get into have groups? Yeah, potentially, potentially. Yeah. Some of the other, some of the ones that they were opening it up, opening it up to, uh, of course, now I'm just brain farting. I can't remember the name of them, but there's several competitors, and the only thing that they do is central central login SSO stuff. Yeah, or, or, or that's their primary business like thing. Yeah, uh, and so I'm assuming that those have groups, uh, but yeah. they're not Microsoft, mm -hmm. Google, Amazon, etc. They weren't, and in they're it also going to charge only that, just today. They're, they're also yeah. going to charge for it because remember, this is a peripheral like cherry on the top of the cake kind of thing for Microsoft. They're interested in selling deeper, more powerful SharePoint and all this other, they want to sell uh, dynamic CRM and all this sort of stuff. They want to sell that stuff. Um, this active directory stuff we're doing is a peripheral thing. We're not even using it very deeply, but it solves a tremendous number of problems for the FileMaker server administrator, the community. Um, so if you go to one of these other companies, 
Um, it might have a little better interface, but they're also going to start charging and you're going to have to spend some money. And I know a lot of FileMaker people are fundamentally um, budget conscious, shall we say. So there you go. So uh, Delgan Dean says, for what it's worth, the new standalone account does not have access privileges. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Full access have. Because my full access doesn't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to go to advanced settings over here. This is what I was talking about earlier. You go into, you have to make sure that it has uh, extended privileges enabled. So if I go to full access, oh, it should. It's right there. Yeah. It should have it. You're saying it doesn't uh, have it? Oregon Dean, make sure you're also in the correct email account. Um, one of the other issues that is super challenging with this is uh, Microsoft will log in, log you into any of the accounts that you're in currently, and you can easily come through with the wrong one, basically. Working now. I was in the correct email both times. Okay. Okay. Well, there you go. So um, um, yeah. at any rate, so the goal is to get away from putting all the people individually. All you want to do is put the groups in, sales, marketing, engineering, or you have, you know, the certain office, the Dallas office, the Los Angeles office, different groups. However you delineate that group, you set up the same group on, Am uh, on Azure, and then you set the privileges in here. So the certain groups can only see certain records, certain layouts, all that kind of stuff. Um, it actually solves a lot of problems. It's pretty cool. Um, so question, uh, Stu says, Windows can get really confusing with multiple email accounts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, good point yeah, there. So other other well. questions from the troops here. Uh, there was a comment on Twitch about users being people within your organization. Yeah, Gold Rush Bob. Welcome, Gold Rush Bob. User people within your organization. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. so, yeah, you would uh, – yeah, so once again, I, for, from our perspective – because we're only using Active Directory, this peripheral kind of component. We're not really interested in digging deep into everything that Microsoft offers because the more things you use from them, then they're gonna start charging you, right? And uh, and so, and that was uh, yeah, interesting, so. By the way, so let's talk about this real quick. So for those of you, uh, Oregon Dean, can you do this for me specifically? I want you to go, I'm gonna do this for, and we're gonna do this together. This is a certification test question. Shh, no one tell you I told you this. Go to data viewer. I'm going to make it a little bigger. And I'm going to say that's bigger and that's bigger. And I'm going to say watch. I'm going to zoom in a little bit over here. And I need Oregon Dean to do this specifically. Um, what you say is you can say get account type. Okay. And I am in as a FileMaker file, but if Oregon Dean does it, because because most of you can't do it because you don't have, you have to have administrative privileges to get to the data viewer. But if he does this, I think he's going to see the word Azure down here, right? Oregon Dean, if you could do that for me, you're going to see. It'll tell you. So I'm authenticating it as FileMaker file. It'll say external. I can't type it, but it'll say external if it's active on-premise Active Directory. Right, on-prem Active Directory. Yeah, see, there it says Azure. Oh, get account type. There get account type, right? This is in the certification test. And so if it's uh, external, if it's on-prem Active Directory, otherwise it'll say Amazon, Azure. I don't know, it says Azure AD or just Azure, right? Um, and then it'll say Google. And then the other ones, what are the new ones you said? It says custom OAuth. Oh, yeah, it says it like it did in my menu. Um, it says, yeah, custom OAuth is the custom OAuth. Yeah, let me go to that real quick here. Let me so file. Uh, you, uh, you won't have it. You're on a. I'm. I upgraded early because I'm crazy. Oh, that's right. So I see these, and you saw 19.4. Yeah, I, didn't a, want yeah I have 19.4. There's a. There's basically a fourth option in that list, and that's yeah. the new custom option. So. So so yours says, uh, Oregon Dean. So yours actually just says Azure or Azure AD. What do you see? It's you had Azure and then four dots, right? Is it, my, is it this exact string or is it just Azure? Azure only. Azure. Okay. That's yeah. just fine. That's good enough. But once again, every time they have a string, they keep changing the strings. It's like if, if the string matched this crap up here, then that would be perfect, right? But, you know, it's like, ah. So anyway, uh, WJ Warren says Microsoft Authenticator is a decent app. So yeah, good day today, folks. Um, I, hopefully it's educational. Why are we sharing this with you? Is because this is the stuff that we're learning, we're using. We eat our own dog food, woof, woof, right? So we use FileMaker. I'm not a Microsoft fan, but this provides kind of a, a low cost, high value 
option for managing a larger team of users without putting all the people in the system. Oregon Dean wants to have a people access the system from Facebook, but in order for that to work, they can't do themselves. You have to grab their information and then manually load it in the file maker, or he said maybe script a way of, of creating it. Yeah, you can create a user. Boy, that's a really good question. Can you script, you can create user with scripts from FileMaker, but can you create a user that will authenticate this way? Oh, oh that's a good question. That's a really good question. Script workspace. If I create a new script and I say something about, let's see the security, security accounts. Here we go. Counts. Add account, add account. So if I add account, account name, let's say, it would be like someone's email address. So this would be like the email, Oregon Dean email. And then the password, ugh, privilege. Now, see, it needs to be. They don't have a password. They don't have a, if for you putting the password in there, you're automatically screwed. Or you could leave a. The account name would be the email. Yeah, but it's not telling you how it's going to authenticate because the account. You tell the account how to authenticate. And see here, there's no how to account uh, authenticate, right? If I go back to file, manage, security, you're, these are accounts, right? These are all accounts. But you're saying authenticate via that or that. And it's one or the other. It's not, right? Close. Oregon Dean, you might be screwed. Nicely as I can say that. I don't know. I mean, it's obviously something they should fix. But a change password, delete account, enable account. Yeah, there's there nothing in here about. Oh, you, know, you could probably do it. Hey, can monkey bread do it? I think the answer to that question is usually yeah. yes. Monkey bread, <laughs> monkey bread can add it and probably add it correctly. We'll have to ask that. Uh, Labo says LDAP. Okay, I know. But where is that at in here? Oh, an LDAP for Monkey Bread. Yeah, Labo was talking uh, up Monkey Bread. I think he secretly gets a commission from Monkey Bread for everyone he sells. That's it for now. I appreciate it, everyone. We'll see you, Margaret. Roll the credits. Boop. Thanks, Jacob. Good job. FileMaker license. Uh, well, it's potentially expired. Look at the back of that car right there. Looks like the FileMaker license has expired. Sir, I need you to step out of the vehicle. Sir, sir, step out of the vehicle. Sir, 